All right, well, back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Spring Championship, and I'm Babel. We're bringing you game number two between Team Casual as well as Sage Gaming. That was a pretty close game. 30 minutes of absolutely fun, laughter, peace, and joy, and just killing things in Heroes of the Storm in the Nexus. So the draw has just started. Game number two it is, and um, pretty interesting turnout, actually. Sage with 1-0 up against uh, Team Casual. Uh, this battleground decided by Sage once again. Casual with the first pick and ban. They ban out Thrall. They pick out Li Ming. It seems like a standard drafting strategy. But it has the Rhaegar to run there for Sage to work with. And <coughs> it is going to be a sustained game, man. Like I said, two Warriors up against two support. Two support just got proven that it's a lot better once again. Just really, really proven. Joanna Vala coming in here for Team Casual. Li Ming. Uh, Guys, is it just me or Li Ming does so much damage? Like Ming Li, like... Moves like Ming Li, hits like Li Ming. 133,000 damage on this Zaz and piloted, you know, mage, Weezer, whatever. She does so much work. And we got Uther getting banned out by Sage Gaming. They have two support. They decided that they're not going to ban out uh, Malfurion because Malfurion, well... Um, Tranquility is just, just really too long, so they don't have Trank to work with uh, for most of the fight. They're Vala, Jonna, Leeming, and Team Casual looking for yet another Zara Tool ban. Zara Tool ban is going to be um, really interesting to see. I mean, I like Zara Tool a lot as a hero, but banning a Zara Tool here, Toron has already gone through. I would actually like to see a ETC ban, yeah. Like, you need to learn your lesson, man, and that's ETC Toron is not going to work. That's a crazy combo. And they're deciding still on what they want to ban out. It could be the Jaina. It could be the um, ETC. It could be the... Um, okay, it's going to be the Jaina. So Jaina getting banned out instead. Probably just want to control the amount of damage coming from Sage. But there is still a third mage. That is the Kel'thas that's available. So Kel'thas does provide some respectable amount of damage against Vala leaving. I think that's going to be okay. Uh, Zagara getting banned out by Sage themselves. They will go for KT for sure. And ETC as well. Yeah, this is very much um, expected out of Sage. Like, uh, Kel'thas does well in this objective uh, for this battleground. To run the ETC is just so rotation-centric. Rhaegar has got some heals that really matters at the end of the day. For Team Casual now, they should be left with Malfurion. And judging by the way they, they pick on draft, they should have two players playing warrior, so it should be a warrior once again. All right, so two more picks for Team Casual. And once again, guys, thank you for tuning in here. I really appreciate your company today, uh, this beautiful Saturday. Um, we, this is the Singapore Open Finals, and we really, really uh, thank you for tuning in. I'm Babel, and I'm the resident Southeast Asian caster for HOTS. And we got ourselves here, Malfurion possible pick. I mean, it has to be Malfurion. We've seen Malfurion a couple of times. It has worked, so it has not worked also, but I'm thinking that it's slanting more towards that it's more viable than not. Last pick here, if it's Rainer, man, that's going to be exciting. Um, no Rhaegar. So no Bloodless, but Rainer should be able to do some right-click damage. The thing about Rainer is that, and rather the thing about right-click damage is that there's a lot of counters against right-click. Straight out. They're thinking about Underbrack, they're thinking about Sonya. I like that Underbrack thought, though. Uh, Underbrack's going to be able to just cancel out one target, ETC. Watch Runda. And you get unprecedented access to the back line. The only problem is that Kel'thas does still have Gravity Labs, and if you can go through Kel'thas, it should be a game there. It's going to be Underbrack, so that's, that's a good pick. Now for Sage. Oh, I like this Greymane. Hmm, yeah. Greymane. It is going to be Greymane for the first time here in SEA. We're going to see some really solid range damage going for Gilnean's build, probably, with Kel'thas. That's, uh, that's a lot of damage already. Level 16. It's probably going to get buffed up by a lot more. Like, really a lot more. We, I'm just looking at, at healthy levels of, uh, of uh, maybe about 80 plus thousand damage on a gray main. Probably going to be go for the throat. Not going to see Mach for the kill, but 
Uh, Gilnean's cocktail getting buffed up. That same perfect aim build going into level one, and uh, you get you get that extra buff of inner beast at level sixteen. That does so much work. And I can actually hit for I think about three hundred eighty per explosion. Like oh, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of damage. It's a lot of damage against like a two k HP on Vala. That's about ten percent more than that. About ten percent or more. Um, also, Greymane historically has got a track record of success against Li Ming. Like, just straight out, just maul her to death. Like, go in, go for the meat, and just enjoy. Profit. It's that good. It's pretty easy. Okay, so we got uh, players getting ready right now. We're going to game real soon. Sage versus Team Casual. 1 0 right now for Sage, Team Casual. Still pretty much uh, far behind. Gonna have to win this next one to bring it to a third game. I think that it should be a third game. It'll only do justice if it's a it's a third game. Like it's too close, too close. But it's gonna be Infernal Shrines, pretty big battleground, and uh, yeah. If you look at the draft once again, I would say that Sage is favorite to win. They play dual support. They're very much in tune with the car meta. Uh, three range damage dealers is not even uh, the lineup for Team Casual. It's just two warriors. That's Adam Barak as well as Johanna. So they can take some out of action pretty quickly, but I don't think they got enough damage to back it up. It's going to be up to Li Ming to carry once again. Zassan is going to be playing as Li Ming. It's going to Ming Li like Li Ming. Or Li Ming like Ming Li. So we got that. Guys, game number two just started here. This is the upper bracket semifinals for the Open Finals in Singapore. We're picking one more team to join up with Resurgence. And on the blue team, we got Sage Gaming. They one game up, they just got to win one more. Make it easy. Revenant playing as um, the Grey Main. Derp onto Kilthas. We got Psyche as the ETC. Harvin on to Taranda. Nelra playing as Regar. And on the red team, it's going to be Team Casual. Mr. Deja Vu playing as the Vala Sheen. On to the Malfurion, Maki as Underbrag, Zan on to John Alas Banali, Zas and playing as Li Ming. Talent options already getting picked up. It's going to be the perfect aim built already for uh, Ogilnean right there. And it's also going to be Ranger Smug, Electric Charge, Mana and Dig rolling like a stone. And meanwhile, for the red team, it's Power Hungry build, Composite Arrow, Multi Shot build with uh, expanded spikes. This is utility based. Um, just a stun improvement actually for Anubrak. Night takes spawn, scouting drone. Very standard talent options coming out from both sides. Nothing too surprising. Uh, Zan gotta really just stop face checking bushes. That that just doesn't work. I know he's Joanna and I think that he can take a bit of a beating, but you just don't wanna you just don't wanna keep doing that. It's a really bad habit. So Hyrun with a bit of a pause. Seems like they are um, having a bit of a mouse problem. They're gonna fix it. And yep, they're ready, so here we go, back into game. And you see that uh, Gilnean Cocktail doing a bit of work already straight off in the early game. In terms of the early game rotation, still gives the advantage to Sage because they still have this ETC to run the combo. That is just still one of the best early game comms around. It's a lot of work, Gravenon goes in, Maw's leaming a little bit, pulls back out, regrets it instantaneously. Bottom lane! Power slide misses a little bit, just barely. Could have been a kill if it did connect. Psyche has just been training this uh, Rome centric lineup for, I think, pretty long while. Derp just uh, should have pulled back a little bit more. Would have fired on the back line for the flame strike at least. Irene Psyche once again on the rotation. They're on the ro they're on the Rome squad. They're on the patrol. And Deja Vu, Nelra bottom lane. Top lane, Maki, Revenant, they're just um, basically doing nothing. Shrine's gonna activate right now. Top lane, Shrine. Maki spots out the uh, Roma, Roma Temp. Uh, there's also that. Oh, the Luna Flare by Sykes seems to be going down. Great pick off there. Arcane up doing too much work coming from Zazen. Magic Missile's connecting Iron as well. It seems like Red Team's gonna have a bit of an advantage going into the first Shrine phase. Shin goes in for some form of heal. 
And ETC just respawning right now. Uh, they're also going to be able to pick up this uh, Frozen Punisher. Pretty easy. So it looks like it's a corroborated five-man attempt in the uh, Guardian area that's spawning in front of the shrines. Psych looking for an angle to go in once again. Derp's already behind. The Gravity Labs is not going to connect, unfortunately. Just very, very, very close. Psych taking a lot of damage from the RK. Now Magic Missile's connecting. Once again, ETC goes down. Maki goes in for a stun. Derp now taking a lot of damage. But Zen goes in. And Mr. Dejo with the multi-shot Revenant taking a lot of damage as well on the front line. Uh-oh, it seems like TC had an earlier game. Like a better early game. The earlier early game. And it's working out for them. It's primarily just... That combo from uh, ETC not working out. They should probably consider stop doing that. Like, it's a lot of overextension if they miss. And they have been missing quite a fair bit. Okay, so 40 it is and it looks like it's a Frozen Punisher. It's going to push down the top lane. Um, Revenant and Psych just got to bait this one past the wall. Oh, not so much, but... Gotta be very careful here. Yeah, it should be enough to kill off this um, Punisher without much of a trouble. Yep, it's gonna go down. So that's gonna only trade up for one tower on the top lane. Uh, oh, close. Derp there. Fortunately, last hit has been nerfed if you are a magic wielding hero. So it's not doing as much damage as it did before. So almost level 7 for TC right now. In terms of build, it looks like he's trying to variate as well again for uh, this jo this Leeming, sorry. And it's uh, Arsenal for Vala. Legion of Beetles going out here. It's kind of like a hybrid build for the Underbarak. Loss of hope for Johanna. Last but not least, it is going to be a rampant growth. Better momentum once again. So standard Johanna. Arcane up uh, Leeming with Zay's Vengeance going in. And the Beetle getting Paradise at level 7. Some extra kills there. And... Uh, Probably gonna be searing attacks. There we go. For Vala. I like the fact that he went for Enduring Growth instead of Cleanse. That's very greedy. And uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how that's gonna pay out. Meanwhile, here for Sage, looks like it's gonna be another Gilnean cocktail. Yes, it's uh, the Incendiary Elixir as well as the Drought Overflow. And on the side for Taranda, looks like it's Focus Attack with Ranger's Mark. May just wanna go for a bit more of right click AA damage. I think that's okay, but Luna Blaze is also very important, so it keeps her safer, and uh, she's able to land targets a little bit further away. There's also the Blood and Thunder coming in, so it's not all Lightning Shield. Like Storm Caller, Electric Charge, we, we both know, or we all know that those are stable, staples, staple talent here for Rhaegar. Uh, Blood and Thunder, not so much. Would say that it worked in some cases, didn't really work in some. Fusion Bomb getting picked up, just keep rocking as well, not going for loudspeakers, so that's a bit of a a build change by Psych there. Same player for the ETC, but just a very different build. Alright, so top lane, they want to go in. Sheen a little bit of trouble. Another power slide goes in the lockdowns. Perfect. And Malfurion takes the fall. Zess and now. Unfortunately, they don't have a second stun. That would have been perfect for a double tap. Um but they're just knocking on the shrine once again. Sage, half a level down. TC just with superior soaking skills. And mercenary cams going for them. They're doing a lot of work right now. They're going to be a little bit more careful. Maki goes in, three men stun. Psy goes in, three men stun also from his side. But the Luna Flare not really connecting on the backline. Maki taking a lot of damage from the Living Bomb. Derp dropping very low. Some heals coming back out. Manages to stay alive. Zang goes in, picks up the kill. Keltas takes the fall. And uh, it's one for one exchange. That's Vala for KT. But the damage against uh, TC has already been dealt. There's a lot of uh, trouble here. Underbrack's being forced to tap the well. Arcane up, co connecting the back line a little bit. And still you see Sage coming on top in terms of Guardian count. Impel going back in. Maki, very aggressive, uh, well, just charge. Gonna have to cap, gonna be very careful because he does not have Burr charge to get back out. But that goes to Inquility, keeping him back up alive. Psych goes in, more stuns coming to play. Psych now with face melt, pulling back out, gonna be fine. 24 against 14, still in favor for Sage right now. Sage needs a level 10, they still don't have the level 10. And they're holding out really, really well. KD in the bottom lane, able to pick up a little bit of damage here, but uh, still gonna see two of those good bros doing some damage in the front line. 
And TC surges ahead right now in terms of Guardian count. Sight goes in, a bit of a one-man stun. Iron Skin popping in the nick of time, but Zan is it getting enough. Zan still goes down at the end, and Central connecting on Ravenant. Not a bad guy. The heal back up at an Elro. Just want to make sure that his damage dealer stays alive. 36 against 37 right now. Three to four more. That's about it. Derby gonna go for the Guardians, gonna go for the Guardians. But Maki goes in, and it looks like it's a red Punisher. Close shave, Maki pays a heavy price. But it will go to Team Casual at the end. Sage there, man. Should have just gone for uh, the Guardians, but nope. They were really engrossed uh, in picking off the Underbrack. And I guess they're going to pay right now. So even if it's a stun, they don't have enough damage to follow this one up. It's not going to achieve anything. It's just basically a bit of a detriment pick a play here from Team Casual. Is it worth it at the end? I think it is. It could have been uh, the front structure is gone already, but because it's the Punisher and you know what they say about Punishers, they they can defend a lane by themselves. So that's pretty good news for Team Casual. Still pretty much in this game. Very much even still. Um, looks like another 30 minutes game. We'll see how this is going to pan out. Revenant top lane against Maki. Maki does have those Beatles to work with, so it's looking pretty even right now. Bottom lane. Uh, those Goat Bros have been at it for the longest time. Somebody finally killed them. And uh, front structures are already gone. So that's bottom lane for you. Zassan with those magic missiles going out doing some form of priest cross damage. Nothing too special. If you look at the heroics, it's actually um, gonna be go for the throat, I think. Yeah. Go for the throat on this guy. Yes, Shadow Stock, Ancestral Link, Phoenix, Mosh Pit. And here it's gonna be Disintegrate, Strafe, Cocoon. Blessed Shield, Tranquility. Very standard talents getting picked up. Nothing uh, surprising once again. A Yen for the day, I see Bloodlust uh, into Mark for the kill, but those are just basically, it's only just a dream. Cocoon is uh, pretty much the go-to heroic here for Underbrack. Like, you have to go for Cocoon. It's too good. Too good to pass up. There is no Divine Shield on this side, but he's, they also don't have Cleanse. That's the tricky part for Psyche. Uh, Mosh Pit, you may not be looking at a lot of Mosh Pit this game, unlike the last one, where it's kind of guaranteed with insurance that he can actually stay alive with an aggressive Mosh Pit. Here, it's probably going to get cancelled pretty easily by, uh, by a few things, like the Blessed Shield's going to cancel this one out, the Cocoon's going to cancel him out. There is no Reign of Vengeance, but Strafe's going to do some good range damage. Shrine going to get activated right now. Leaving just a, a bit too far out from the rest of the red team. But Sage now. Going to be very careful. Shrine is active. There we go. It's alive now. It's hot. Leaming. With the flank by the side. Derp. With Gravity Labs connecting on two targets. Some form of damage coming up. But the Flim Strike not really going in. And not doing damage. Psych. Goes in for a very aggressive play against Vala. Vala's Vault completely negated right there. Zassan with the uh, Disintegrate, but not going to do anything more than that. The Tranquility getting popped back up. Maki going to stay alive. Zen in a little bit of trouble there as well. You saw the Razor Swipes coming back in. And go for the throw being used there by Revenant, but still not enough damage to pick off uh, the Johanna. Seems like a pretty easy uh, Punisher here for Sage. Team Casual. Pretty much behind. Half a level lead now going in favor for Sage. And Sage just doing whatever he can to push the top lane. The Lunar Flare ones get not connecting. Hyrene down to about 40% HP. Heals back up to 60. Will be okay. Zand still posturing. 27 against 1 right now. That's the count. And uh, Deja Vu is back for this fight. 27 and counting 28. Zen. Okay, Shield Glare not really being very effective there. Arcane Op also not doing much. Disintegrate doing some form of damage against the ETC. There goes the lockdown against Zen. Zen also gonna pop the Iron Skin, will be okay. And you also see the, uh, well, the Condemn not really connecting anyone. Joanna taking the fall as well. Psych looking for a top lane push. Punisher coming back out once again. Revenant using the Disengage to shapeshift back to his human form. The Op's gonna do a little bit of cheap damage against the Punisher. Derp looking for that uh, the gravity lapse angle against uh, Team Casual. Got to be very careful. Psych from the back line. And it's going to be a two-man stun. The Mosh Pit also going to connect. And it seems like it's going to be an absolute good lockdown. There's no follow-up from the side of Team Casual. But a cancellation. And Central Healing keeps him back at full HP. But it only killed one Leeming. But what this also means is that the top lane push will still continue on. That's the fort. It could be the keep. 
Arcane Punishers typically do a lot of damage. And, uh, well, that just got shot. That just got shot in by a lot because that guy just jumped across the wall and it's gonna die right now. Still, the front structures will take the fall. The keep is still gonna stand though. And, uh, Sage pulling back. With a bit of a mid lane rotation coming in. It's level 16 against level 14. TC now. Needs to get level 16, but they are not going to be able to do that easy because they can get the EXP from the top lane. Mid lane's kind of pushed out, so they don't have that option to work with. Uh, bottom lane's where they're doing their best to try and get up as much value as possible, but they're also going to lose the Bruiser camp or the uh, Fallen Shaman camp that's going to be on the top lane. It's going to push down there pretty easily. But they need a level 16 for Team Casual. If they don't have le level 16, they're not able to pick a fight. Spell Shield on Underbrag, Frost Shot as well as uh, Glass Cannon on uh, Zass and the Leeming. There's also the Burning Rage going, uh, getting picked up by the Joanna. Live Seed for Shin. And on this side here for Sage, it looks to be the same Gilnean build I was talking about with running while getting picked up. So that uh, is a bit of an increase of range by 35% and Concentrated Blast 80% buff when Inner Beast is up. That, that is a lot. Uh, shooting Star getting picked up also. This uh, refunds mana cost and also uh, does more damage. There's the Shrink Ray to work with. There's the Earth Shield. There's the Earth Grass Totem. Um, it basically slows 90% backdrop. No Arcane Barrier. An imposing presence that uh, has got the enemy attack is slowed by 40%. Showstopper getting picked up as well. Okay, so Sage, what this tells me is that they're all going for very burst centric comp. There's also some extra slows in the form of utility for the Regar to work with. And ETC should be going in for a lot of work there. Revenant taking so much damage from just the Disintegrate. No Temporal Flux here, but when that happens, it will be an easy level 20 pickoff for Leeming. Shrine gonna activate just about eight seconds now. And uh, Sage again with the aggressive uh, roams and rotation. Revenant dropping 50% HP from just one uh, entangling root connecting into multiple damage spells coming from leaving. The Revenant getting a bit of a hits up in terms of guardian count. They are now eight against zero. And team casual. They have to pick a fight right now. They are just barely level 16. Sheen gonna get lifted up by the gravity labs. Gonna have to also pop tranquility. Renamaki goes in for a three man stun. Deja vu with the strafe now doing a lot of work in the front line. Uh, but Maki also just buying some time in the side as well. And we have to run it down to 50% HP. Zestan still at very healthy amount of, uh, of mana right now. Derp down to 50%. Deja Vu up against Nelra. Nelra overextending a little bit on his part, but still 25 against 14. They're all just tapping well right now. You also got to see the Gilnan's cocktail doing some form of damage. Side goes in, one man stun on Zen. Not going to be good enough. Gravity Labs not connecting on the flip side as well. Going to see the Maldi shot come back out. Zestan looking for the Arcane up combo. Meanwhile, uh, safe to say that Sage has got most of that ground secured. Arcane up goes in, doesn't really connect. Actually saved by a Guardian, but it seems like Sage picks up the Mortal Punisher. Now's the time to fight. Now Shin in a lot of trouble. No Ice Block will go down. That's the healer gone. And John Cena on the blue team. Going in for the RKO stun on the back line. Zesan down to 50% HP. And he got Deja Vu down to 50. Also the Strafe uh, used, but not really effective. Out comes the Phoenix. And Sage, they know they got this in the back. Gilnean Cock, they're doing a lot of work with the Inner Beast back up. Revenant able to push the team back out. The RK now bursts 50% HP on Revenant. He's still alive. The guy's still kicking. Pavala goes down. Great plays there by Sykes. Setting up that fight there as well. There's a resident MVP. The Punisher is still somehow in this game. And there goes the stun on Zen. Zen in a lot of trouble. Sykes follows up. And it's another kill. Three men down on the side of Team Casual. Zazen going for the burst against Sykes right now. Maki. Gonna be very careful. The Punisher just flew past me. And it just went down. The keep is um, down, so the mid lane's pretty much pushed already. The top lane's still pretty okay. They, they spot up a pretty easy fort for the taking here. Pretty rep as well. 30 seconds before, before Johanna's back in. We got about uh, two and a half levels to go before Team Gadget can get back to level 20. It looks like Sage is in a pretty dominating spot right now for the level 20. And Psych picking up the uh, Goat Brothers. The Kajras, if you will. They're probably going to be able to get the uh, bottom fort and it's automatic push to the fort bottom, fort bottom lane at least. 
mid lane, it looks like it is going to be a bit of a mercenary camp at Temis Wall. Zassan with the burst against Derp. Pretty okay. Pretty okay. So far, one burst from uh, Leeming. It's 50% uh, HP. If you go into Calamity with the um, Teleport, that's going to do extra 500. If you have Temporal Flux, that's going to do a lot more. But you're going to have to use and rely on uh, Vala primarily. For those damage. So Stomp Talon's getting picked up here for Sage. It looks like it is gonna be the human blunderbuss. That splash on basic human attack for Greymane. Hunter's swiftness, more movement speed, Stomp Shield, double bolt of the Stomp on both that uh, ETC and already in the Marsh Pit. Nice Cocoon by Maki, cancel this one out. Derp now a little bit of trouble, goes in for an extra double chain stun, Deja Vu with the strafe and Sastro keeps him back up alive, Psych at full HP, ready for a fight Machine getting back, slow by backdraft, Deja Vu getting healed back up and still now game as Psych still goes in, Shin at 50% HP, dropping a lot of HP, gonna be fine, there goes the disintegrate No temporal flux means no slow, so no extra damage on that part, Zan back to 50% HP again, pops the end skin, will be okay Some more kills, that arcane up, if it did connect, would have been just absolutely painful. But good defense on the side there by Sage to pull back out. Uh, great try by Zassan. Just gonna give you the, da the damage numbers. This game, 71,000. A bit like Luster in his part. He used to do about 120 and 130k. 70 is not good enough. So he's gonna do. A, he's gonna have to do a lot better than that. Uh, Sage probably wants to m just paint, paint it blue, bleed blue right now. And then we have the uh, cams getting picked up on top in the middle. They're all gonna automatically push those lanes respectively. That's gonna provide some form of a pressure in the back minds of uh, Team Casual, but they really need a level 20. They cannot afford to take this fight without 20. Sykes still has got uh, the um, Bolt of the Storm. Spots out uh, by the scouting drone, will be okay. Another burst against Derp, he's gonna be fine. 20 seconds before the whole uh, big you know, chain burst spells come back online for Leeming. 10 seconds right now. Should still have Arcane up in just about three. Uh, we got Luna Flare connecting on Zen. Sight goes in. Shin in a lot of trouble. Shin left for dead in the back line. That's the healer gone. Sage got themselves a really good pick. Now Zen in a lot of trouble. Does not have the indestructible. Level 20 not hit just yet. Deja Vu in a lot of trouble. And the Grey Mane just wants a piece of that Vala meat. I just want that Vala meat. And Dravidan gets himself that Vala meat at the end. Now Maki. Jets out of there, Li Ming, that's not your base, sir. He's probably gone. Uh, looking for some big play moments, not gonna be able to kill Hyrene. Regardless, that's four men down on TC. Moral of the story, no 20, no talk. And Maki now, last lone survival. Should be able to buy some time, but he still needs a level 20 regardless. Even if the whole team respawns here, there's a lot, there's a ton of mercenaries. You name it, whatever fell minion you can dream of, they're all here at the red team core. Three catapults to back them up. This is gonna be game, guys. 60% on the court, dropping real fast. Sage looking to pick it up clean. 2-0, and Sage wins it. And move on to the upper bracket finals. To face off the winner of the other series there as well. Uh, pretty close on the kill of Maki, but not close enough. Team Casual, so close to 20, but still not close enough. All right, we're gonna see if we have a replay for you guys. In the meantime, Man, 79,000 damage. So it really is just Zassan doing a lot of work. This game though, no kills on Li Ming. So unfortunately, he just didn't have the opportunity to burst down anyone. And that's primarily because he's up against two support. Two support, just too sick. Look at the amount of heals by Regar, 78,000. Nelra doing a great job. High range, 59. You name it, they have it. They healed up more than enough, 53,000. Yes, still Li Ming does a lot more work, but it's just not enough kills at the end. 14 against four. Um, really just Shin getting caught in the back line. We got a replay ready, so we're gonna pull that out right now. This is the last fight. Look at Shin's position. Psych, he took over that air van from the back. Who would have saw that one coming? That's insane. The scouting drone saw Psych there. They should have played it safe. Uh, Shin should be sticking with uh, Zessan and Deja Vu. That's where you should be, because those are the guys can, that can actually save you. Um, no, not Johanna. Johanna cannot save you. That's just really, really good plays by Sage, just um, ambushing from the back. That's also because they got level 20. And these guys are confident that they can pull off a level 20 advantage, and they did just that. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this cussing coverage. This is Babel, and you're watching the Spring Championship. We'll be back with the Upper Bracket Finals really soon. So sit tight, stay tuned, and don't go anywhere. We'll be back. And right there, not able to do anything. Seems like Relic just wants to pull back right now. 
Uh, this is going to be the opportunity for them to do anything. Mata not connecting once again. Another big disintegrate coming out all the way here from Derp. And Murgo saying wants to pick up this kill. Not able to do anything. There goes the Divine Shield. Not getting canceled. Already Psyche getting healed back up by the Ancestral Link. Nero dropping so low, but still alive somehow. Mur not able to pick up this kill. And all of a sudden, Musica in a lot of trouble. The Arp will connect in the back line. Only dropping so low, but it's still nobody dying. Arp again on Trinity. And that holds Hiring going for the kill. Psyche gets stunned instead.